Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about all my cars and trucks and SUVs, the motorcycles, the camper, the dogs, the opinions, the weather, life, the craziness. Wow, Kiefer. Wow, wow, wow. Good Monday morning. I hope everybody's having a blessed Monday morning, and I hope everybody had a blessed Saturday, Sunday, which is gorgeous up here, just incredibly beautiful for you to be out and about doing your thing if you're an outdoor person. And wow, here we are going over, trudging over to the barn on my daily Monday through Friday conversation, even though I reach out on Saturday, Sunday to say good morning to everybody. But here we do the walk across the driveway. Do we do the walk? Do we hold the hands together? That's what Dan how to can is like, you need to make a together video, which isn't a bad idea. The word of the day should be together, is what he says. But that's not the word of the day yet for Mr. Dan out of Canada, who I appreciate it, checks in regularly and participates in my channel. And for all those others that do the same thing, thank you so much for uh, helping me keep it going on my rattle tattle, dance, speaking, whatever it may be that I continue to reach out to everybody on my channel, say hi, and share my ideas and views and thoughts. Watch my channel, the whole idea is I share with you my craziness of my life of me buying cars and trucks and motorcycles and going broke while I do it, while I try to make an income off of Ice Age TV, YouTube, AdSense money, which doesn't seem to work. Befuddling, befuddling, befuddling to me of how others make all this money <laughs> that really to me their content sucks. It does. You just can't convince me of watching a guy go to a car dealership and tell everybody the car dealership's going to go broke. That's really anything that really teaches me anything because they don't own the car dealership. How do you know the car dealership's going to go broke? I don't understand this by any means, but whatever. So here we are of the craziness of the Iceman. Yes, the Iceman, the Gidby even bought me a nice big sticker. And as we um, get in here the shop, oh, the kid yesterday did my trim job. The wife just complimented me and said I look really good. She cut my hair to nothing. <laughs> yeah. My daughter literally buzz, buzzed me. The, uh, the, it's actually the, the, the most uh, cut I've ever had my hair in recent times. So she made me... Uh, but she likes it. Irony is, many years ago, I had long hair, long beard and everything. It looked like Santa Claus. And on my birthday, probably when she was probably just a kid, uh, I shaved myself. And the kid came downstairs and she started crying. Because <laughs> I shaved. I mean, I was totally bald. Everything had gone away. All right. Now, here's Kiefer as usual. The dog of the antics. Look at the shop. Shops all change around. I had to do that. In order for us to have, oops, nope, nope, go on. In order for us to uh, have options on what we take to the car show, which was, that was yesterday. So look at the shop, it's all rearranged. And that's a project for me, just to freaking manhandle these motorcycles. Till you move this stuff around, you just don't get it without dropping it or scraping it or whatever it may be. But I moved everything around because I uh, wanted to get... The availability of us to be able to make a decision yesterday morning. Do we take the motorcycles because we want to ride the Harleys or do we take the cars? So my theory was if last second we decide to take the cars, the cars are right there ready to go. If we last second we decide to take the Harleys, they're right here ready to go. And that worked out really well yesterday, moving things around. Got the, uh, the chair here. Got the uh, Gales uh, food um, <clears throat> channel up. And I didn't even know this, believe it or not. This morning I got up and came out here and set up the, the uh, YouTube to show some video content, not knowing that she published this. I didn't even know that she published this, and there I am. We'll watch that there in a second here. For Gail on her YouTube channel, thank you so much for making a video. Very nice of you. And Don is back. Don is back in the show light here um, with him right next to that, that Honda he loved to have and his good old truck he used to have. And, his beer can, empty beer cans in by the truck. That, isn't that kind of the, the day of us growing up, the empty beer cans in the truck? And God, oh, it's so funny. Here's all my loose hair from my daughter cutting my hair and stuff yesterday. It's all over the car. Oh, well. <laughs> I got creative, and I painted the front end of the splitter just because I just never spend the time. Yeah, I painted it. Yeah, I don't care. Yes, it is. It's not as, at least it's not as 
visible as it used to be. And yeah, do I need to replace it? Of course you replace it, but just another project, another task. Oh, it just doesn't end on the Iceman's agendas of things to do. So once again, I hope everybody had a blessed weekend. And uh, wow. So the word of the day today is called safe. And even for me, I am amazed. I've never used the word safe on all my content. Sometimes I'm just even taken back myself that, you know, that, that I would have had that conversation because it's so important of what vehicle you buy, how safe it is. And that's a very, you know, motorcycles, most, a lot of people don't ride a motorcycles, they don't think they're safe. So, uh, but the biggest reason the safe idea popped in my head, if you're uh, uh, in tune with what's going on in the country, Donald Trump um, had a guy um, try to possibly um, kill him. We don't know for, we don't have all, you know, for once again, it becomes misinformation, YouTube man, ice man, misinformation. Whole point is the safety of Donald Trump is at an all-time high, as it looks like somebody at some point is going to take him out. So it's just incredible. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole on that conversation today, but just uh, just incredible what we're witnessing. As I said, if people really listen to me on my channel, I said coming into this election, it's going to get crazy, and I think the other side is going to... Uh, try to get you riled up and have you crazy things. But you know what's really interesting is it seems that the other side is getting their own so riled up, they're doing crazy things. So, wow, oh, boy, you talk about what plays out in November for the election day. I can only imagine what happens if Mr. Trump is elected. Whoa, oh, I don't think we've seen anything. I think we're all our jaws are dropped when we see that end. But who knows? I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, leave my channel alone. So, yeah, the safety, I think that that's the number one thing that most people are concerned about when they go out and buy a car is how safe is it. And we all know the number one brand for years has always had the bragging rights of Volvo. Volvo brand has always been the so-called safest vehicle built in the world per se. And you'll hear many parents say, you know, I'll get my kid an old used Volvo station wagon for their first uh, car because they're so safe. And as you know, on um, the statistics, the teenagers and the, the, the 20 year olds are the people who usually go out and crash their car and usually kill themselves, sadly. They're the highest statistic of the death rate on people dying behind the wheel of a car. And so the safety of us and our cars, it's really, to me, quite, it's really befuddling because we live in the age of so much technology has come into these cars for the, you know, ABS, the frontal airbag system. The cars are now designed more than ever to take the inertia, the energy to crumple, to help you in a car not take that impact like you would back in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. You can only imagine this truck with Mr. Don, that this truck was in an accident how the Andres truck would probably be pretty much intact, but you as the occupant, you would probably be severely injured or killed because it was just such a solid vehicle. And that's how they made the cars back in the day. But then they began to understand that they've got to make these cars crumple so that if you saw the video of my daughter totally in the Ford Mustang bullet that's out there on my YouTube channel, you'd see that that car, that Mustang, saved her because... Of the impact where that car hit and all the crumple zones took more of the impact than she did. And, and we believe she hit the car at about 40 miles an hour or 44 miles an hour, something like that. Don't know the exact statistics, but the car, and it wasn't really totaled, but we made the decision. I made a decision to let it be taken away because I didn't want to get into the, the what ifs on it. And the guy in Florida that actually watches my channel here and there, he actually has that car and put it all back together. You would never know it was total, but it's a salvage title, so it'll always be known to be one, but it doesn't look it. The whole point is, that Mustang, in so many ways, possibly saved her from more crucial in, uh, injuries of this model year versus like the, like the 70s model year. Maybe even the 80s or 90s model year, the car may have not absorbed that crash and it'll put more in the occupants. So that's more of the design today of cars, and it becomes more expensive for insurance companies because these cars crumple easier and they're so expensive to replace. So, but this is the irony to all of it. The irony is this thing in my hand. 
that they're showing more than ever that the reason people are crashing cars is they're distracted. Yes, that's a huge, huge problem. And so it's kind of it's kind of really sad that on the one aspect of our engineers and the manufacturing and the transportation on how cars have been designed better to be safer for you and I, but the occupants and the drivers behind the wheel of the car are actually more dangerous. <laughs> so it's gone the opposite direction. If you really think about it, cars have become safer to drive and crash better crash vehicles, but the drivers that drive them have become worse in their habits of paying attention to the road to drive them. And all you have to do is look at the statistics, and that's what I did, I pulled up on my phone the statistics of what's going on, and you would just kind of shake your head that how can, how can it be that these cars today are such more the safer crash vehicles <coughs> per se? <coughs> Here's my water. This morning I was smart. I got the water out. And, uh, and if you look at the statistics, which I have on my phone, it, it doesn't make any sense because technically the... Uh, I'm sharing all my personal information here. So here we go. This is number of crashes <clears throat> in a car per year. So 2022 to me, 2022, the, the pandemic was just kind of coming out of the pandemic. So 2022, I don't even think it's a really a good year to pick because, but it's the most recent statistics. So there were close to 6 million motor vehicle accidents. Look at that. Close, this is in the U.S., um, that same year, 42,514 motor vehicle fatalities. Um, let's see here. In 2022, 1.6, non-fatal, 42, uh, the, the amount of money spent for the cost, 48, $481 billion. Um, 61% of the crashes were cars. 18% were pedestrians. So yeah, 18% of people who die are pedestrians. 15% were motorcyclists. You're... You're at higher risk walking than a motorcyclist. Would you believe that? Um, so then I looked at this here and I said, what about... Okay, so here's another thing. Average, an average person crashes their car three to four times in their lifetime. Some people I know that have never even crashed. I've crashed quite a few times. Uh, let's see what else we got here on the motor vehicle. Uh, let's see here. So look at this here. There were 127,000 motor vehicle crashes. Virginia, wow. Every 4.1 uh, minutes. There was something else in here, though, that drivers of the age 16 to 20, it's usually the male drivers that distracted driving as the top of the list. Distracted, distracted driving is the number one cause of car accidents. Wow. And it's getting worse. So that's what I was just saying. Are we live in an age of the technology of these cars is at an all-time high. So, you know, in some ways, you have to say that the Elon Musk that wants the robo-taxi, in some ways, he's on the right path because it just showed there that there's an increase of the distracted driving and the crashes are getting worse from it. So even though people are paranoid as heck, they get behind a computer-operated uh, self-driving vehicle, <laughs> in some ways, that vehicle in the end may be the better vehicle. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I'm with you 100% on that's freaky. Am I going to do that yet? No. Am I going to be a guinea pig? No. But in long term, more you'd have to honestly say that that's where things are going because everybody's more preoccupied when they look at their phone. Everybody does it. I mean, I know there's certain people that are very disciplined uh, not to do it, but if you live behind the wheel of a car like I do, for three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours in a day of just driving around taking care of business, it's just about impossible not to have your phone within hand's reach to be looking at your emails, your texting, your phone calls, breaking news, blah, 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 blah. Very, very challenging to go throughout the day. And you see it. I see it all the time in delivery drivers. I see big guys, delivery truck guys driving down the road, looking at their phone, reading their phone, texting. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, it's really bad. And, and that's one thing, a lot of, I know a lot of people that have quit riding motorcycles for the, for the simple reason they don't trust the drivers because of the uh, distracted driving, which I don't disagree. I mean, I, yes, you're at a higher risk, I would say more today than ever, of being on a motorcycle because if people are distracted 
looking at their electronic devices, which then they don't see you. And that's a huge concern. Until you ride a motorcycle and you come up an intersection, a person's area pull out, you're only hoping that they really do see you and they're not distracted looking at their phone and they didn't see you. That goes on all the time. And so, yeah. And, and then the other thing is, if you have a handheld phone in your hand, it's a ticket violation. In Virginia, it used to be reckless driving. They've taken it down. But and that's one thing. Yesterday, I did a lot of 360 content with the 360 camera on the Harley Davidson. And I've, I've spoiled so many people because of my video content with this cell phone, the Samsung cell phone. The video is so clear and so more real that I've spoiled so many that follow my channel because this gives such a better real view of like when Julia is riding her motorcycle down the road or I, I view around. But the way I do all this is extremely bad and dangerous. So for so, so many that watch my channel, I've already had comments from me making that 360 Insta camera yesterday, which I thought overall it was pretty good. But you don't get that really up close type of look. My daughter claims if I would edit the video and pull in that view, it would be better. Like, I, I don't know. It gets too far. You know, it might drive you nuts. And Mr. Sanchez is really watching my channel because he's seen all the motorcycle activity and he's really very interactive. And he's saying, hey, do you and Julia have your headsets paired? We don't. Should we? We should. But the constant challenge is we're, we've got two, three, four different style helmets. <laughs> Each one has different technology in it. And then I just bought Julie a brand new uh, cell phone, the iPhone 16 Plus. And so yesterday morning, we're getting ready to leave. Her, she, her new phone is impaired to her helmet. So she, she starts screwing off that. I'm like, we won't even go to the car show today. Once you start trying to pair that phone to that helmet, try to figure it out. And so then she's like, forget it. I'm like, right, because you're not, we got to go. Just forget it. So then we get to the car show and we're getting ready to leave. And she still hasn't done anything. I'm like, just pair your, your phone to your bike. And so she did that, and that actually worked out very well for her because she could listen to her speakers. Now, if she had driven her Honda or another vehicle, she'd have been very disappointed because sitting there trying to pair these devices to your phone, to your headset, it gets so maddening. And then yesterday, it's the same old story I talk about all the time. And the thing is, it's a safety issue, too. You get distracted when you start playing with your devices. When you're driving a motorcycle, it's very challenging to be doing all these other things that you're so used to doing in your car, and you're just, it you distracts you. It takes your eyes off the road. It's very, very challenging. It's very dangerous. Your safety starts to play out to your disadvantage. So in so many ways, I'm sure there's some people out there that are like, I don't want anything to do with any of technology. I just want to get that motorcycle, go get wind in my face, have a great time, I want nothing to do with being bugged on my motorcycle. Somebody calling me. I mean, that's distractions. It really is. And so, um, <clears throat> for me, <clears throat> to answer Mr. Sanchez, answer, no, we don't We don't talk back and forth. Julia will just do hand signals or, you know, whatever. And I know. People will argue, oh, you got to have the two-way communication. Yeah, whatever. How did people survive 20, 30 years ago? How did people survive this world 30, 40, 50 years ago, driving around a car with no phone in their hand. How did we do it? I mean, I'm sincere. This younger generation, and even us, I don't de deny it, if we ever had a major, uh, you know, all Russia or China has to do is turn off the whole cell phone network and um, streaming internet capability to everybody's phone, this country would go into chaos. I can guarantee you the kids of this country would go, would go beyond believable it would be, it would be, that would be just a war itself because they would be turned off from being able to look at something all day long and have instant gratification of whatever they want to look at. We didn't have that growing up. How did we survive? I mean, sincerely, get here. How did we make it without all this damn technology? Just be unbelievable. Back to the safety of, uh, of the cars and the trucks and the motorcycles. And that's the biggest thing. There's the biggest thing my wife. She just, I mean, we've already had this conversation. Even Gail has tried to push my wife to, to ride in the back of this trike. It just, she just doesn't feel safe. She doesn't feel safe. She just doesn't want, she doesn't want it. I mean, it just isn't going to happen. I just can't, I mean, my wife, and for me, 
I don't just putt down the road. I'd have to honestly say that for my wife, she'll get in the back of that motorcycle. And as I start to kind of get up the road, she'll probably be like, no, 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 no. She'll be tapping me on the shoulder. So down, so down, so down. I'll be like, Jesus Christ, I can't deal with this. I'm just more happy. <laughs> I'm more happy just riding down the road by myself because I don't need somebody tapping on my shoulder, distracting me that they're scared we're going to crash. And then what I think happens is the occupant, the passenger, um, becomes the energy inertia that creates the energy of the paranoia that creates the crash. Who doesn't have that happen? I believe in that, man. Whatever you're focused on all year long, <clears throat> at some point it probably comes to you. And I just think like, wow, you know, you got somebody in the back of your bike and they're paranoid as hell, you're going to crash. I think it just then just brings that energy around you that you probably will crash because that a person that's with you is just constantly petrified that we're going to crash. No, you can't do that. And once again, you walking is at a higher rate of dying than riding a motorcycle. Who knew that? I just told you statistics. Wow. Yeah, incredible. And... Nobody wants to believe that you get in your car today that you may be killed in your car. I mean, but you don't believe that because it's a car. But you don't understand there's some whack job that's distracted behind the wheel of a car right now looking at a cell phone that drives through a red light intersection as you drive through it and T-bones you and saps your neck and kills you. But you don't think that's going to happen. One thing I'm very concerned about the safety of these electric vehicles is just that, the battery pack. The battery pack, T-bone, hard T-bone crash, the truck probably goes up in flames. I mean, I don't know. Hope not. But at the same time, it's very concerning to me. Where's the kid, right? Where's that 450? The kid's at the gym working out, getting her morning workout. Is she, uh... oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, and so for me, if you watch my channel, have I had the moments of my safety on the, on the line of my life? I have. Yes. And do you get back on the motorcycle? I mean, once you've had, if you look at that Easter Sunday crash that just about took me out, I can tell you right now, I guarantee you, some motorcycle people will be like, I'm done. I ain't riding no more. It happens all the time. People, I mean, it's very challenging. You know, these motorcycles, all these motorcycles, right? Wow, 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 wow. So here's Gail and Brian that went and met up on Saturday. Just saying, Gail and Brian came out to the, uh, the barn where we keep the horse and ride the horse. And they spent the time there. And then we went and had a nice little anniversary lunch, nothing extravagant. I took him and treated him, and Gail made a video that day. So here I am. Here's Goof the Ice Man. When you see yourself on your own video, it's like, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm here with the Ice Man, and we are at Lovisville Diner in Lovisville, Virginia. And Gary likes it here. I do like it here, but they're probably going to ban me eventually because I'm loud. Uh, <laughs> what did you order for lunch? The Nate omelet with the onion, sausage, onion, potato, yeah. and cheese. What did you order? I did the Western omelet. Gail's Food and Stuff. Subscribe. It wasn't that great. They didn't do a good job, really. It kind of was disappointing. So now here we are. Here's Julia. And there's the barn where we board the horse that I bought Julius seven years ago. He was just a kid. And this is all on Gail's channel. We can watch this better than me. There you go. Hit that subscribe button. How about that, huh? Right? So that was very that nice short video. She kept it really simple. Which hey, everybody, Jackson yeah. Galaxy. So my my mother-in-law... And my wife use my channel. Use my channel to watch YouTube. So everything that they want to watch is on my channel. So just for the record, you see all this stuff? This is not me. This is not me. Uh, <laughs> that's not who I'm subscribed to. You can see my subscription, but then it's in interesting how, you know, on Saturday, we were talking YouTube conversations, and it's a constant rhetoric in my channel on how these guys... Um, make all this money. It just it just really does befuddle me on what goes on. And if I can see here, I was sharing with them that how it's so in intriguing to me that how these guys, I was talking about numbers. 
And for some people here, probably, yeah, that gets boring. It's all boring. But what I was showing was on how it's just a numbers game. Life is all about numbers. You just saw the numbers there on the uh, on on the statistics of how cars crash and and what the, you know what the odds are that it's going to happen to you. Fifteen percent as a motorcyclist, eighteen percent as a pedestrian, and so everything's numbers. The whole universe is numbers. And I read about this many many years ago that everything is attached to us as a number: your address, your weight, your social security number, your birth date. Your uh, LDL, you know, your cholesterol, you're assigned a number at work, your account number. I mean, you can go through how much money you paid, everything, everything, everything's numbers. And and then football, you know, all sports are numbers of what, who won the game, numbers. And then statistics of how many yards, what's the passing, right? It goes, it's infinite on numbers. And I said, what befuddles me about, like, the YouTube community when I try to become bigger and better on my channel and start to make big money, um, it's just is befuddling because if you look at my numbers and you look at other numbers and these people I talk about all the time that walk around and just share the doom and gloom of the whole world. And, and so I was looking at that on Saturday with Gail and I was saying, this is what's interesting. Is here is a guy with 250,000 subscribers. Um, his views over time on a video will go to half million to a million views on some of his videos. And it's like proportional that you can see that the guy with a hundred thousand view, view hundred thousand subscribers, he'll be hitting forty to fifty thousand views, eighty thousand, hundred thousand views. And so it seems like they're the numbers, the algorithm on their subscription is proportional to the success of viewership. I said, well, so if you take that number then and you look at my channel that has over 12,000 subscribers, I should then be hitting 6,000 views on a consistent basis, two, 3,000 views on a consistent basis. I should see 12,000, 24,000, sometimes maybe even 50,000 views. If you look at their channel with the people that have supposedly all these subscribers, and it's the ratio. It's just a numbers game. Everybody knows that it's a numbers game in life when you go try to do something of what the number will be, and it's just an average overall. And so Gail kind of takes, she kind of believes, doesn't really buy into what I'm saying. She just kind of feels like these are people who are incredibly successful. I said, but it just makes no sense because it's just all numbers game. And then she was very um, informative on how she has a good friend that um, has started his own food channel and he has exploded he has exploded just overnight and he even went out of his way to help her make a video and he was all part of that video he was in that video and gail's point was to that to no avail nothing came from that meaning it was no difference in viewership of her channel even though he was there and he's well known in the community of being the go-to Asian, he's an Asian gentleman that really focuses on Asian food and he's cut out a niche and he's incredibly successful and growing by leaps and bounds. He's, he's left his job and he's moved to Arizona and he's just, he's kicking butt. But yet when he comes to Gail's channel and he's present and he's helped participate and he's known, but Gail's channel did nothing. So you have to scratch your head. I tell her, that's where I, that's where I question the validity of these people that are making these YouTube, the YouTube creators, what they're doing on the back end. I think one day people will remember these conversations one day when it's so disclosed on the, uh, the really what goes on behind YouTube and how people are created for success versus others. It's just a numbers game. It's a very, it's a numbers game where majority of people will never ever make it. And there's select few will. And that's just what it is. And let's just not harp on that because you've heard that conversation a gazillion times. So for us as individuals, we all kind of come to closure. We want to buy something, do something for the safety and well-being of us. And one thing that my daughter had a hard lesson on was she, we bought the Street Bob and not realized when we bought her that used Harley Davidson Street Bob, it didn't have ABS brakes. And she did not realize, and I really didn't even think to really hammer on how you got to be careful on that front lever because if you're a motorcycle enthusiast you know when you grab this front level lever on the right hand side for your front brake primarily that makes these calipers grab your uh, disc 
If you're not careful on a non-ABS bike, you'll grab it too hard and the front wheel locks up and then you're going to go down. And that's what happened to her. But at, not at a really high speed, thank goodness. But the whole point is, I think, I don't know, the real, the real true motorcycle, motorhead enthusiast will say the ABS is a waste of time. You don't need it. You just have to understand how to feather that front, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. For me, I'll take the ABS. I'll be the little wimpy guy. I'll take the ABS. I'll, 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 that's who I am. I'd rather have ABS. Rather have the motorcycle kind of be in tune and how to stop the bike better than me. I don't live in these things every day of my life. So for anybody out there that's looking at motorcycles, um, just remember that ABS is sometimes on and available and it's an option and sometimes it's not. And for like the CBR that I bought, Julia 1000R, they had the non-ABS and then they had the ABS. And I made sure that we got the ABS set up just because I was very... I just want her to have not have to be worried about that front wheel locking up. Uh, the Honda Goldwing, the safety, the well-being. I actually had the first generation brand new redone 2018 with the airbag uh, model, which I kind of wish I had that again. Very expensive. Some people don't like it because it takes away your little um, pouch here. Like my good friend Chris, he doesn't want that because it takes away this little storage area because this turns into the airbag deployment airbag area on the Honda Goldwing and and this is the gas for anybody here looking at this and this here is where you push you open the gas cap you have no idea when I first bought this motorcycle I was sitting here pushing down couldn't I was low in gas I could not figure out for anything in the world how to I, they didn't tell me you have to open this little compartment here there's a little gas uh, latch release I didn't know that when I bought my first Honda Goldwing back in January 2018 I'm at the gas station just like what I don't know how to put gas this thing. I was so befuddled. So the uh, the point is, the well-being and safety on the Honda Goldwing, I feel like, is probably one of the more safer motorcycles, even though BMW and you have other um, product lines out there that are very safe motorcycles. But I think the Honda overall, you know, I think that's what sells you on Honda is the safety, the reliability. Because who hasn't had, for me, I'll never forget my first street motorcycle that my parents let me get an 11th grade of going to high school was a Honda, a Honda, a Yamaha 550 Maxim with the more of the um, touring style type of look to the bike. Not the Seca that was more of the sport cafe looking type of bike. And I'll never forget, I was leaving work in a nursery that I worked after school to help pay for the motorcycle. I was going up a very busy road and when I was going up the road... The bike went over a lot of bumpy areas, and the motorcycle stopped. It turned off. And there was a big-ass RV behind me coming up on me, and I just pulled over as fast as I could to the shoulder of the road, and that RV went by me and just about ran me over. That was my first, first really scary incident on that motorcycle, and the safety and well-being of me was at jeopardy because that motorcycle turned off. Any of you knows you're on a motorcycle, and you're going to go across the road from dead stop, and you, you know, pull in front of traffic, and if that motorcycle dies, the odds are you're dead. And so, come to find out, when they got the motorcycle put uh, put together at the dealership, the mechanic didn't tighten down the battery connections correctly. So the bike was, uh, you know, so battery connections would vibrate and come loose. And who doesn't know these stories? I mean, that's, you know, as you know, motorcycles are shipped to dealerships. They got to kind of put the finishing touches on them, on putting them together. And if you got a numb nut in the back shop that's not paying attention, is distracted. Yeah, back then, did somebody call on the house line of the, the dealership and distracted the guy and walked away and forgot he didn't complete turning down all the screws on the battery? Probably. That's something to that degree. Or, you know, somebody runs in the back, hey, John, this person has a question. This kind of stuff goes on all the time. But the point is, when it comes down to buying cars and trucks and motorcycles and whatever it may be that you want for transportation, I think a lot of people would agree that you, you do step back and say, what is the safety factor of that vehicle? And like for years, I had these Jeeps that were all lifted, and it took me a long time. It really did. My first Jeep I bought in like the fall of 2014 was a leftover 2013 red Jeep, convertible, stick shift, and they had put a little lift kit on it, big tires, and it took me about a week to just come to closure if I felt I was safe in that vehicle. Because the vehicle had a roly-poly feel to it. I go down the back roads, it would feel so much like if you really weren't in tune with that vehicle all the time, 
that the vehicle would go off to the edge of the uh, road and possibly you ended up crashing or flipping it. Who doesn't know the story of my Honda Talon here where I was going down the back roads hauling butt with Brian and I didn't have an all-wheel drive and the back end came out from me and I went sideways and put it on its side. Uh, you know, it's freaky when you do that. And so, once again, it's what do you feel safe in? And I guarantee you there's people that would raise their hand and say they've driven cars, trucks, whatever it may be, and they just didn't feel safe in the way that vehicle handled. The biggest thing is the brakes. That's something I notice a big difference between all my vehicles is how one vehicle will have incredible instantaneous grab the brake uh, pedal feel and others won't. Like the Kirby truck back here that I never drive, which I should never even bought, but that's a whole other story. That truck there, the, the brakes to me don't feel that great. They feel a little weak. The big Chevy Bison over here, hidden way here in the back, trying to keep all my vehicles kind of uh, in place here. That truck kind of has kind of that little lazy feel. GM, I think, for years has kind of been that way. It just feels a little soft. It feels like you got to... I mean, once you put your really your foot on it, the brake really grabs, but it feels kind of... It doesn't feel the same as some of my other vehicles where it's such the instantaneous. Here in the Ford Lightning truck, since it has the regen where the wheel motors help you stop by using the wheel motors to put energy back in the battery pack, it's that one pedal driving that um, it helps the car brake. So that car has an extremely amount of braking capability. The Corvette, as you know, the biggest running joke about people that mod their cars is they'll go out and they'll put their Honda Civic and they'll turbo it or they'll mod it and and then all of a sudden they get this badass car they can go very very fast but the um their rotors their brake calipers their tires and wheels they never upgraded them for that faster car and they can't stop them versus like this z06 this car is built with big ass rotors and big ass calipers and brake pads ceramic if you want that you know it gets very technical but it's built for you to be able to stop the car that's a that's a huge importance of racing a car is having the capability for the car to break and look at the size of these discs on this camaro z28 i mean in so many ways it's about as big as the wheel of the freaking uh, car i mean it's just incredible but you know if you're doing incredibly racing you know, brake fade, that's a huge problem in the racing world. If you're really a motor enthusiast and you really want to take this car to the track and run that car through the straights and the corners, if you don't have incredible braking capabilities and you have brake fade, that would probably be the difference of you wiping the car out and crashing it when you go to the track. So I'm sure everybody here can relate with the car you drive does it have that braking capability? And for me, I'll never forget when I was working in the fuel industry, driving big tanker trucks that used air brakes, that people would get in front of me when I had a truck that basically had 80,000 pounds of weight, and they would pull in front of me and come to a quick stop. And all I would do is pull, all I would do is push down on the brake on the truck, and the truck would just sit there and slowly, slowly, slowly come to a stop through the air brake system, but it would just roll to a stop. It wouldn't just stop, it rolled. And I would just be like, man, you have no idea on how this truck is. And I would just roll up to their bumper thinking, you know, wow, <laughs> you're, you're lucky I didn't just run into you because this truck doesn't operate like a car does. And it's this car is possibly 30 times, 40 times heavier than your vehicle. But people don't understand that. And people, and you can ask every truck driver in the the world that drives these big trucks will tell you the same thing. People cut them off, and they think these trucks just stop on a dime. They don't. There's Kiefer. It's all about that ball. Hey, the NHRA weekend was a pretty cool weekend. Austin Prock, who stu stood, stepped in on the John Forrest racing team. It's pretty incredible that John Forrest was in a horrific car crash. Jack Beckham, who had been away from NHR NHRA drag top uh, fuel funny car, drag racing for probably 10 plus years. And this kid, Austin Proc, that came out of nowhere to fit, to take the seat on John Force's um, racing team, he had the funny car side, he literally, he, he was taken out because of the crash. Then another guy was taken out because of health issues. 
And these two other guys step in. And yesterday in Reading, Pennsylvania, up there at the big NHRA weekend, it was a great weekend of racing, um, Austin Proc and Jack Beckham come to be head-to-head again in the final race for the top funny car win and John Force's cars. Wow. What's the odds of that? Brittany Force, she didn't do well. Um, that's in top fuel, though, the dragsters. And then Tony Stewart. I so want to see Tony Stewart make his day, and he just can't do it. He keeps on... But the track conditions were crazy yesterday. If you really watch, um, if you understood the NHRA's drag top fuel dragsters in the in the funny car and how those guys, the tires are basically spinning, basically spinning the whole time going down the track, and it's such a fine line of those tires spinning and connecting before you spin out, you know, blow up the motor or you wipe out the car. But what people understand is. Letting off that 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 the fuel on those top fuels, there's so much unburnt fuel. Those things keep on going. <laughs> That's why they have those those parachutes. And those parachutes are timed, or something happens in those cars. I think where the parachutes automatically deploy or something. I'm not that detailed on it for the safety and well being of those drag guys. But if you ever really look at what goes on in those cars where they go to 330 miles an hour, like in three point some odd seconds, is beyond believable. Until you go to an event and see that, it's beyond believable. But it's a fine line of the car being out of control and being in control. And once again, if you drove that car and you nailed it and then even let off the gas, it's still going to be hauling ass <laughs> because of all that, you know, the, the nitro and everything else. So, uh, all right, that's it. I, I talk a lot, and but I was going to wrap it up and say, it is interesting that how our country seems to be um, safe, unsafe. I mean, I think most of you on my channel right now would all kind of come to agree that what is the safety and well-being of our country? And that's what started this whole thought process of the safe conversations this morning is because I thought to myself after hearing about Donald Trump yet again, um, no, no, stay here, stay here. The safety and well-being of Donald Trump is probably at its highest risk in modern times and I just thought to myself you know it's incredible on how we're so divided in this country but are we and that's the danger the media machine I think will try to convey that the majority of people are for this sitting administration but they but the majority of people really aren't <laughs> that, that's the real story and the reason they have to do that is because when the election comes and whatever happens in the election it'll be believable if somebody gets elected because the media machine pushed that that person would get elected. Versus if everybody really knew the real numbers that most people don't feel safe in this country. I mean, look at my wife. Why, even my daughter last night were talking about this. Why is my wife, my wife now goes to the gun range every week and she uh, really enjoys that. She says it takes, that's her outlet because she grew up shooting guns. Her father was a very avid, avid uh, fisherman and hunter. And he taught her all that stuff when she was very young. So she really does enjoy going to the range, and she's an incredible um, shooter. And she, we're going to go to the gun show and pick out a gun for her because a big gun show is coming into town, and she's really excited about that. And then I'll probably end up buying some guns as well. So that's going to be an adventure for the wife and I and the kid because that gun show is coming to town this coming weekend, which is just local here, which would be really fun. But the whole point is my wife has a very con she's very concerned for the safety of her and the family the well-being of others and it's going on more than ever the gun sales have gone through the roof why it's because people don't feel safe in our country they don't trust the government and the in the county they just people don't i think people more than ever just are coming to closure that you can't be looking for somebody else to take care of you anymore you got to take care of yourself and if you're not prepared Sadly, your safety could be uh, a jeopardy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll talk all day long. I know that. Ask Gail and Brian. Ha! Ask Shannon and Chris. Ha! Anyways, that's it. Appreciate everybody watching my channel. And appreciate the support. And stay tuned for more adventures, stories, antics, whatever may else be on the horizon. So God bless. Hope everybody has a beautiful Monday. Enjoy your coffee. And stay tuned for more on Ice Age TV.